I assume that this is unlisted. We're just... All right. So for this coming on, you know, doing this, I really have to prep ahead. I mean, I could be in a really crazy state of mind, but if I want to do this, I have to prep and I have to let you know. And, you know, you need to, you know, look and see where, you know, things are and be able to tell when things are happening because I don't always follow the plan. And so I didn't follow the plan today. Because that was the very last thing I was worried about. During this live stream, I am going to be working. So I'm not completely wasting time. So just know that. If I'm sick of speaking and doing all kinds of stuff. And nothing actually legitimately gets accomplished. So I'm going to go to my Quizlet because I have a test to study for, for sociology that I need to take by today. So I think it would be best if I do a little bit of this while I'm talking to you, if I can. Oh, I have a whole sequence of events to tell you about. But, you know, one thing that you need to know that I want to make really clear is that any reversal to try to make me feel the feeling of gratitude has officially just, just, it's just flew out the window. That juice of it, that, you know, that emotion, those feelings of feeling frustrated with this person, of you're there and there's qualities that you reject or you're not a fan of that make you feel less positive in, in terms of just mentally or emotionally. I think that not even that, not even the reverse out of the situation is going to remind me of what I have in my life because I feel like I have so little in my life. Even though I have so much I have so much, but all of it has been impurified. I mean, that is the best way I can describe a lot of the stuff. I may not even be using the right words. Let's hope I can find the words. I, you know, the sun's in Aquarius and the moon's in Gemini today, and we have a whole bunch of air in the sky, so surely I shouldn't struggle to find the words. Um, but I think for those people who lack air in their chart, you know, particularly like, you know, my grandpa, he suffered from depression for, you know, many years of his life. And I was looking at his chart. He has barely any air in his chart. The only one thing I could see was his Mercury was at zero degrees of Gemini, which is kind of, I mean, it's in Gemini, but I mean, it's just at zero degrees. So it barely moved into Gemini on, on the day that he was born, you know, at the moment. 
uh, that he was born in. And, and, and I just want to highlight how difficult that that would be. Like, imagine having all these feelings, all these emotions that are down, you know, getting you depressed, getting you feeling really low about your life. And you feel sad and you feel all these feelings and you can't verbally express how you feel like, isn't that sad? Isn't that really sad? Isn't like, you know, that's, that's just, you know, I, I mean, I don't want to live with that. You know, on the other end of the spectrum, I don't want to feel dull and like I can't feel and express emotions. When I watch a movie, I do want to feel what that character is going through. I want to understand. I want to be a lift it, touch, and move by what I'm reading or watching or feel the emotions of somebody else and, you know, understand with compassion what they're going through, obviously, without getting taken down by that. And I don't remember ever getting taken down by someone's over, pro, someone else's problems that overwhelm mine. I will honestly say that I've lived 18 years, I've never had that experience. I may have that experience. Never say never, but I have to be honest. I don't want to sound superior, but I have to be honest about what I recall and, you know, with my own personal life. So, today is the last day of January. I believe a year ago today, I was sitting here doing a live stream down here, which I shouldn't even talk about because I've gotten rid of it. So I'm just going to save that conversation because anything I have did, done over the past that I've deleted, when you delete something, it loses all value. It loses all value. So, yeah. You know, you're deleting every aspect of what you're deleting when you're deleting it. It's a pity that you're not deleting the memory of that. It's a pity that you're not deleting the feeling that you have, but you are deleting every part of it when you delete something. Just know that. And you don't want to lose that, so don't delete it. Nothing that I said has had any value whatsoever. I didn't have too much to touch on because at that time I was living in a different experience and I had certain problems looking back, but it's natural to later on in perspective view those problems in comparison to the current problems you have if they're worse. It's natural. But what about when you're in that moment? What about the problems that you're living in? moment that you're dealing with and that you're experiencing. I wonder if it's any surprise to any of you that I have been feeling depressed for many months now. I've been feeling depressed for many months, many months since I would say it began in May and I started to experience the regret of a memory that I couldn't get rid of, you know, beyond what I got rid of, what I actually took care of, which was books. I felt so guilty about not finishing books that just sat on my shelf for a long time and I did not address the problem. Like, so much time could have been spared 
But then I just gave all those books away that I felt better. I could move on. Not this time. Because the things that I have done that I have talked about over and over again, and, I, and I'm kind of sick and tired of it. But you know what? You know, I, I'm going to be honest, I'm not, I mean, I don't want to put on a performance. When I do these, my intention isn't to purposely perform. It's just to use this as an, as an outlet to be true about what I'm feeling in the moment. I watch these videos, I watch these live streams, and I think, wow, I'm seeing this. What about all the other things I've deleted? What about all the other live streams I deleted? I have said that. And that should make, well, it does. I mean, it does if I make it so in my mind. You know, I'm at the point where things had better go the way that I want them to. Otherwise, forget about any happiness, forget about any sense of feeling um, the experience of gratitude, the, ex the experience of joy, finding joy in things. Well, the joy is so fragile. And I am walking, I'm spending my days walking on this ice. That's really thin. And it's so thin that the slightest thing is just going to crack that ice. My perception and state of mind over like social media and videos has been so impurified. And I can count the many regrets I have done in the past. You just keep cracking a wall. I mean, isn't this the same thing that you've been hearing me talk about for so long now? It's like I try to soothe and comfort myself and try to put a band-aid on the pain when I do these things and when I talk about it. Eventually, that is going to get old, so old, that it's just not going to be enough. Will work to heal that balloon. Well, you know what? I don't know if that balloon's going to hold out for securing it with that, whatever I'm doing to secure the balloon that much longer. Could I eventually become sick and tired of doing this? Or is there actually going to be some change? A change to where I really feel it. A change to where it's unbreakable. A change to where I can pound down on the keyboard after, ha you know, knowing that I have a huge assignment that I have to get done that day and not feel guilty about it and be completely logical and really and truly see all that I have in my life and not get so caught in the details. View the forest for the trees. See all the good. Seeing both sides, the good and the bad, but really seeing the good to where if there is a test, it's not going to break the foundations, or in this case, the foundations. It's not going to break the foundations of my building that I have built. 
what happened in that classic story of that, you know, the big bad wolf story with, you know, the, you know, you have this foundation, not sturdy enough. The big bad wolf could knock it down. I don't feel like my current foundation is built of that solid type of brick that won't break. In fact, you know, those bricks have been destroyed and sort of hold the foundations up. You've tried to find the materials that you can, but they're more fragile materials. They're less quality materials. I mean, even when I talk, I mean, I don't want to brag, but don't I speak really well? Especially since I've fixed my R sounds. Sometimes when I talk, I just feel really, like, impure hearing my own voice. Like sometimes I hear myself talking, and I, and I just, can somebody tell how I'm feeling, actually feeling that I have this kind of voice? I mean, I, I, I'm not going to hold back. I'm not going to sugarcoat stuff here, so... When I hear Deborah Silverman talk, I kind of feel the same or similar feelings just because we talk kind of sim in, in similar ways. That also goes for um, uh, Maria de Simone and I. We also talk similarly. Um, we also sort of, you know, I mean, you know, we're similar. But what's Deborah's state of mind? probably has more perspective than I do. Probably feels like she is living a better life than I am currently living. I can almost guarantee you that that's the case. Seeing all the stuff that she produces, well, you haven't done the same things because you have been born at a generation that is way older and you haven't been young 18 years old with technology you've been older more experienced um more you know wiser you're at that stage of life now and all this technology is coming out when i see this little you know reels and posts that's kind of reflecting back me but a version of me that may not be as impure as I feel now. And so I'm going to say that Deborah Silverman is the first astrologer I followed and I've watched for so long. But it took about two days, more than two days, combined with a bunch of other stuff that's in my mind, perceptions, emotions right now. It took a couple of days for me to sit through and have a goal of watching every single past astrology horoscope video that she has done up to now because I wanted to get those done because they're really short and they're really, you know, light and, you know, all those kind of things. In those days, I've destroyed the value of those videos by compulsively binge watching one after the other, sitting and doing it until I was exhausted from doing it. Then I took a break and it was like work. It was trying, it was like getting something done. As opposed to doing it for sheer enjoyment and watching the videos for sheer enjoyment. The same goes with the, those channels, those subscriptions. I had so many subscriptions. Um... 
but it's actually reasonable what I did. Although I don't view it like that, it's actually reasonable to, you know, click on a video and watch it for a few seconds and get a sense of it. You know, apparently that's reasonable. But then you add all the other stuff to it, right? You add the binge watching. You add the insecurity when it comes to feeling secure if I if my hands are clean enough. You add the insecurity of when I'm going to the restroom and you know that whole deal. You add the dryness of like see how dry my hands are. Can you see how dry those hands are? That's another insecurity. That's another impurity that I feel right now. They're better, but they're worse things. I have to keep up applying the stuff and you know, doing all those kind of things. You had that insecurity. You had the insecurity that I and the guilt that I feel about my computer or phone. And the constantly on top of it all getting barred with situations or you know, videos. And, you know, watch this video over here, watch this video over here. When I do it, it's like I, you know, have to do it. I feel, you know, like I'm obligated to do it. I feel tempted and compelled to do it because it was commercialized. Well, you know what? Just, just, that's just so impure. And so I don't, you know, watch or view anyone's stories on social media anymore because they commercialize their videos and posts, and I feel anxiety and insecure when I do not finish something that I start. Like, when I watch a video, I have to finish it, otherwise guilt and purity comes to me. So I don't like that preview for that reason, I don't like the, you know, the commercialization. I mean, you go on Mel Robbins, you follow Mel Robbins, um, who does, you know, you know, she's a, you know, life coach, just, you know, wellness mindset stuff, you know, bettering your life, um, you know, taking action and, and, you know, achieving what you want. Um, and that kind of thing. So, you know, her Instagram story is really busy and it's active. And I constantly see stuff about the podcasts and, and you know, it's just, you know, along with other people's stories and what they commercialize. And it's all about just, you know, watching this video. And I, oh, I made this YouTube video. And I made, you know, all these kind of things. And, and you know, selling that, it's like, oh my gosh. What about what isn't current? What about what isn't up to date? What is about when, you know, what about the videos that have been there for a couple of years and they're totally nourishing, worthwhile to watch? Or I'm not watching the video that's up to date, that's not being sold at the present moment, it's not being talked about, you know, now, but that was made in the past that I got something out of it that I was, that I felt satisfied with what I watched it. I enjoyed it. It was fulfilling to me. It was interesting to me at the, at, you know, at whatever time that I'm watching it at the time or later at the time when it was published around the time when it was published or years later after it was published, you know, so, you know, there's that element you tack on to. I'm using an old phone, so that also, you know, makes that and, and you know, that perception because I'm using something that is dated and not up to date on a regular basis. I wake up in the morning and look at it. Um, look at, you know, social media and stuff. And also, I want to use a new phone, but I just have a negative association to it and negative perspective on it and I want to push myself to do certain things I want to push myself to record videos do a mentee meetings but I know that if I do I'll regret it. I push myself 
but I knew I should not have done this, but I did it anyway, and I regret it. Like, I really want to branch out and do new things and take risks, but every time I do, I, my mind is so just trained and so far down into the mindset that if I do this, if I take a risk where I drain the battery with this intention or this reason, that wasn't doing it for, you know, social media or doing, you know, then I will regret that. If I do a single video, audio recording, live stream for the event and this, or anything other than what I need to do that for on my YouTube channel and social media, I feel guilty about it. When I use that phone for anything I can use the other phone for, and it's something that, you know, drains the battery off of it, like, you know, recording a video or something, you know, that drains the power off of that new phone, I regret it. It's the same as I regret doing an audio recording of the whole class, which was composition, because I wanted all of you to hear what this teacher sounds like when he is teaching. And I want to have something that I can keep as a file. But I'm sitting here and I explain how the day goes. I can actually be in that experience again, hear it again, relive it. And then I can, you know, really get into some, you know, juicy stuff from it and some real stuff actually having the experience of hearing it and, you know, sort of recalling, you know, having an emotional memory, like an exact emotional, you know, experience, reliving how I felt in that moment. And I want to do it more real because sometimes just sitting here and just bending and explaining about stuff is just kind of old. You know, you can only say so much. So, yeah, you know, I do want to make it more real. Um, so yeah, I did that. Um, I'm, I'm not going to answer that because I think that, that is so rhetorical and so obvious at this point that I, 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 I don't need to answer it. So I'm 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 not going to answer it now. But what I am going to do? Oh, I said I was going to do stuff while I'm talking about here, and look at me! I'm sitting here talking. And this is the wrong Quizlet, so I need to find the one that I need to get to here. In order to do this. So, yeah, while I'm doing that, I am going to go and grab, you know, the phone and, and, and do a couple steps, and hopefully I can just play the video right off of this computer. So, I actually haven't gone into how the day went. Sociology was fine. Um, he was going over, talking about, I uh, forget what he was speaking about, but um, talking about cultures and society and nature versus nurture and all those kind of things. So he's really good at providing, you know, examples and keeping, you know, on topic and really earthy um, and really, you know, show very social very, you know, open, friendly, easy to get along with, um, makes it fun and engaging and clear and, yeah, great. 
certainly more, um, you know, earthy and practical than my, uh, you just like foundation, excuse me for a moment, but, um, my mu uh, music uh, music foundations um professor sorry i had to do that i really you know i'm going to sit here and apologize for that i'm going to sit here and apologize because once again i was doing something that did not feel like myself didn't sound like myself. If any of you write any comments saying, oh no, you shouldn't do that. That's that's wrong. You just make fun of somebody. I would ask you to not comment that or delete your comments because again, you know, I did that for a couple reasons. And that was not me to do it, but I just did that for effect and for emphasis. You know, the short answer is, the class is a joke. It is a joke. And the teacher himself is kind of a joke. Do I have any, like, like, racial comments to make about that? Or any kind of reasoning or any reason why I would say that that would involve his race or where he comes from? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And I'm not going to go into using metaphors on this live stream because I have work to do. And when I have work to do, I do not use my own metaphors. I don't want to. So... He, let me just pull up his, can't do it over these live streams. Let me just pull up his natal chart. I think I, because I asked him when his birthday was today, August 19th. So he is um, a Leo son. So that makes sense. Very generous, warm, um, you know, sociable, outgoing. Um, so actually let me type it in. I am going to work when I'm doing this. Some way, shape, or form, it's going to work out. So, born August 19th. Uh, and I am going to get to Jessup because I have some things to say, but also not a lot to say on that. But I don't have a lot to say about somebody. I think that's, you know, really positive. I, you know, I mean, maybe I have a lot to say that's positive about that person. And that's, that, you know, that's really good. But I don't have a lot to say that's negative. At this point. And there's a huge reason behind that. And I'm going to explain what the reason is. In just a second. And you're going to hear him talk and teach when I get the thing. Which I will plan on doing while I'm working. So August... 19th, 1979, I think it is, yes. So he has a Sun in Leo, Moon in Cancer, Mercury in Leo, Venus in Leo, Mars in Cancer, Jupiter in Leo, Saturn in Virgo, Uranus in Scorpio, Neptune retrograde in Sagittarius. That's, you know, really good, Neptune retrograde. Um, when Neptune goes retrograde, N Neptune is fogginess. It, you know, it's like a fog, a mystical energy. Neptune direct is, you know, really dreamy, spacey. Um, it 
deals with the spirituality, empathy, compassion, that connecting, you know, moving into higher forms, higher dimensions, you know, if you will, it's kind of, you know, that kind of wording. Um, it's also delusion, deceit, deception, you know, not healthy boundaries, you know, merging, not, you know, getting taken advantage of victimhood. So it is, you know, retrograde. When Neptune goes retrograde, we really get to the opposite sign of Neptune. But so Neptune rules Pisces, opposite, opposite that is Virgo, which is really practical and logical. And we can see things clearly for what they really are. Sort of, we're going kind of on a, I want to say, like a spiritual narcolepsy kind of thing when Neptune is retrograde. Um, for a certain amount of time out of the year. So like, let's say about five, six months out of the year, Neptune's retrograde. So June 28th last year through December 3rd last year, that was the whole Neptune retrograde phase. December 3rd, Neptune station direct in Pisces. It's gonna retrograde again sometime this year. Um, so yeah. So yeah, Neptune retrograde in Sagittarius, Pluto in Libra, Lilith in Virgo, North Node in Virgo, which is about structure and organization and schedules of Piscean energy can get lost and distracted by this and you know, off and you know, dreaming and and you know, not taking, you know, care of yourself and, and you know managing and running your own life. Um, not drawing the healthy boundaries. And so North Node in Virgo is about, you know, getting Thing practical, and at one point in 2015 um, um, and 2016, I think 2016, maybe uh, either in late 2015 or 2016, for about I would say the first eight months of the year, I'm sure at one point Jupiter was conjunct the North Node, which was in Virgo at the time, and Jupiter will move in Taurus on May 16th, um, conjuncting the North Node in really early degree Taurus by, um, you know, in June of this uh, year, because the nodes move retrograde. So they start at 29 degrees of a sign. They end the North Node and South Node end at one degree, zero degrees of that sign. So um, Jupiter will just beginning to be traveling through the sign of Taurus, so it will conjunct a couple times um, this year in the late spring. Um, so, yeah, and then July 22nd, I think Venus goes retrograde on July 22nd. I think it'll stay retrograde till September 3rd this year. That'll be Venus will retrograde in Leo. This summer, I'll do a video about that on my YouTube channel. I'll talk about this, or maybe in a minted meeting. At the moment that Venus goes retrograde, who knows? So, you know, probably schedule a meeting for that time, but anyway. So, uh, as I'm looking at this chart, where the Sun and Leo, Moon and Cancer, Mercury, Leo, Venus and Leo, Mars and Cancer, Jupiter and Leo, Saturn and Virgo. Remember, Saturn's about getting serious and becoming the master and becoming really disciplined and those kind of things. In Virgo, which is about details, you know, Uranus and Scorpio, Neptune and Sagittarius, Pluto and Libra, what was in Virgo, North Node in Virgo. Um, not a whole lot of planets retrograding except for Neptune. Not a whole lot of Earth in the natal chart, which isn't surprising to me too much because, you know, you. He wants to present himself as a serious teacher. And he didn't feel good today. His voice was kind of, because he had, was sick over the weekend, and um, the doctor said that he should stay home and not talk too much, but he came to teach and you know, oh, I really wanted to do this. Well, did you really want to come and teach or to come and, you know, talk and talk with the students and engage with them in ways that are 
interfering with why people are in the class to begin with, um, which is to learn, in this case, to learn music fundamentals. And it's not doing its job as a teacher, not putting what it needs to into it. It's not, could be more valuable to him. It's not focusing, not doing his job the way that it should be doing instead, you know, just getting off topic, getting distracted again. Um, talking about, you know, really gross and just inappropriate things like, you know, women's clothes and sexuality and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah. And the other thing is in the class, I'm really confused and lost. You explain all this complex material and then you get off on other things, you get distracted. You don't break it down step by step. And, you know, um, it just feels not exciting and not the priority in the class. So yeah, I'm not really getting what I want to out of it. So yeah, that was that in short of what it was today anyway. So now I am going to pull up what I need to pull up. Actually, I'm going to speed this right along because it is 6.50 now. Okay, so where is it here? All right, here we go. Number two reading. Start question. Next question, the term scientific method refers to the way psychologists research a problem in consistent objective ways. Use person, no, is the answer, no. I have a good feeling it's gonna be that one. Yes, it is, research a problem in consistent objective ways. Next question. List the primary stages of the scientific method with the first step at the top. Developing, yeah, okay. So here we go. To find the problem. Uh, okay, so I guess we just rearrange these. So I am doing this while you're doing this. So just know that. A couple of things I do want to say is I am... Um, going to have Deborah Silverman not come to the event in a long time. Um, because I just need a break from, you know, her so that I can feel better, of, you know, about, you know, watching her videos and less guilty that I spoiled or ruined her because I, you know, watch so many of those videos. So I need to take a break, and so I'll do that. So that I can view her in a different way. Just the only juice left is the reversals. I kind of want these people to sell their stuff so can maybe they recognize what's free. Well, guess what? No. So I want to feel better about what is free. 
what is there for me to explore stuff so that may be in order for me to feel better about it i need to take a break from it and i'm going to do that It is that one. Yes. Yes. Reviewing previous literature on the same topic allows a researcher to... I don't know. I'm working downstairs. So I am going to, you know, let her go. And it's going to be sad to do so. But I think I'm going to do that. I really was feeling this morning like this is kind of what I want to do. And it's not that I, you know, You know, by all means, she was the first astrologer I've ever followed, ever watched. And I kind of, I feel like I've just spent two days just watching her, you know, videos one after the other instead of you know, picking and choosing them individually and watching them just for the sake of wanting to watch video. And so that memory and those feelings are there. So it's, it's because I want to enjoy, you know, watching her videos and, you know, reading her posts more. And so if I want to do that later in the future, then I think a break in the present is kind of what I need to do. And it is the same story that keeps repeating itself. And I want to break that story. I want a different story. I did make a commitment to my YouTube channel. And I'm, I'm going to keep making videos. False? Oh, false. That the, Okay, when people are confronted with empirical research, you know, well, let's talk about something productive here. Let's talk about something productive. When people are confronted with empirical research disproving a common sense claim, they change their initial common sense beliefs to align with the research. That is false. Just people... I mean, I'm not going to say it. I think there's an explanation for that. Um, ensure objectivity. It leaves that systematic. It is personal. It's organized. Is this correct? Oh, wow, that is correct. It's designed to ensure objectivity. It's systematic. It's organized step by step. Boom. My hypothesis is a guess about a sign of acknowledging. Nope, wrong. Um, is independent of variable. The testable statement about the connection between multiple variables. Um, it's that one. Yes, it is. Testable statement about the connection between multiple variables. 
One of the primary stages is scientific method, defining the problem, reviewing the literature, formulating the hypothesis. Yes. Gathering only data that supports the hypothesis. Yeah, it's not one of those. When researchers say that a measure is valid, they mean variable mean measure. It's called say something. Researcher is right. Measure is characterized and reflects the object in the study. Um, I'm going to choose it. Oh, you. Okay. It's not that one. The measure of skill truly reflects the object under study. It measures what it is supposed to measure. That's the right answer. Which of the following can be appropriate components of the research process in sociological studies? Observing the subjects, asking the subjects the questions. Don't have time to read through that. Move on. Conducting research, sociologists review literature to gain additional insights, analyze it. Get insights, search for mistakes by other researchers, and report the mistakes to know. Um, yes. <sighs> All right. A control variable. Yes, that's what it is. Common sense beliefs are not always reliable because such beliefs like which of the following. I have a good, yes, it is that. Why is research described as cyclical? Dis disproving one's predecessor's research is every new Researchers goal. Hot research topics are dependent. Generation of research is almost. Uh, yes, research gener generates new ideas that lead to new hypotheses. Yes. Casual logic is best described as the relationship between a condition and a consequence. With one leading to the other is a transition between the abstract concept into a measurable factor. No. This one? No. Oh. The relationship between a condition and a consequence with one leading to the other. If researchers produce accurate data that is right on target, they are demonstrating Validity. It is important for students to understand the scientific method, even if they so they can. Yes, I've already done that before. I've already got that correct. Research design is a detailed plan. Yes. It is that one. False. Predefined series of questions designed to collect them is a survey. Um okay, it reinforces what we are nope.
two of those, and yes, that's correct. To be effective, a survey question must lead respondents to an answer the researchers want be general in nature. Um, um, to be, be easily understandable by the respondents. Okay. A defining trait of a hypothesis is that it does not explain why things might can be tested. Can be tested. It that is correct. Uh, the type of survey that includes forms for taking information is the questionnaire. The measure proves the research. No, the measure produces consistent results. The measures. I think it's that one. Yes, it is. Measure of skill truly reflects the object under study. It measures what it is supposed to measure. Yes. They gather and analyze data. So the researcher, the research design chosen by researchers guide the way they gather and arrange data. Next question. When researchers talk about a mean, they are referring to the midpoint that divides the series values to two. Adding series values, yes. An average that is calculated by adding a series of values and dividing by the number of values, yes. If you've been asked a question by the Pew Research, by Pew Research about how you plan to vote in the 2020 election you participated in, um, okay, this is an interesting one, a survey. A, a survey, yeah, that's correct. If the number of drinks consumed by a small group is four, four, six, seven, and eight, the number of six would be Z. Median? What is the most important factor to consider when writing a survey question? It must make the research as obvious, it must be begging. No. Nope. Simple and clear. Is that correct? Yes, it is. 10 out of 25 concepts completed. Researchers who have a limited budget want to gather accurate data would be likely to use Questionnaires. 10 point quiz or 10, 10, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 8, 7, 6, 6, 6, 6. The mode is 10, 10, 9, 9, 9, 8, 7, 6, 6, 6, 6. Yes. If researchers produce accurate data that is right on target, they are demonstrating validity. When sociologists study behaviors in communities, which of the following research methods allows the greatest depth? Statistical analysis, analysis, observation, questionnaires. Is this one? Oh no, it's observation. In a series of numbers 10 to 2 to 2. Um, percentage mean. Mean. 
The median approximates the blank between the highest and lowest values in the set of scores. Average. Midpoint. Oh. To be effective, a survey question must be easily understandable by the respondents. When conducting a sociological study, a researcher becomes the roommate of two people who are participating in the study. She documents how they deal with their friends, parents, friends, romantic encounters, and leisure activities. This is an example of Participant observation. The most frequently occurring number in a series of numbers is the mode. The experiment is Um, I'm going to do the last one and hope that that's right. An artificially created situation that allows researchers to manipulate variables. I'm going to send another link when I am done with this all, and then I'll come on another live stream. So when I'm done with all of this, I'll send a link, and then I'll get to the second part of this live stream.